For months, Victor Stevenson chronicled the birth of his artisanal lemonade, stand on Facebook and Instagram, in posts punctuated with hashtags and exclamation points. Shazam! Our awning is going up at this very moment. He wrote in May celebrating the arrival of the gourmet sign for his kiosk in San Francisco's gentrifying Mission District. Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. So exciting! A few weeks later, during a trip to see newly installed custom lights, he thumbed out a post, so cool. But his post on July 17, just a few days after Gourmetade's grand opening, wasn't about lemons or lights or his signature white shirt and bow tie, he told the Washington Post. It featured a police service pistol that Stevenson can't stop thinking about and an encounter that, even a week later, leaves him rattled. Four cops just hopped out on me guns, almost drawn, took my ID at my own store, he said on Instagram and Facebook. This racist thing is out of control, but it won't stop me. Living my dreams like they are golden because they are lol. On July 16, Stevenson had hired a company to address a leak inside his kiosk, but he said its work had somehow messed up the alarm system. He had arrived at the stand before 7 a.m. the next day to start squeezing lemons, but spent those first few minutes leaning against the building on the phone with the alarm company. At some point, he saw a police car cruising up the block, he said. I started to pay more attention to my surroundings, looking for anything that I need to not be a part of. Then two officers got out, they're walking toward me. And I'm still looking for this crime scene, he said. Did something happen behind me? It didn't hit me until the officer was in front of me like a foot away. I said, hey, did I set off the alarm system? If I did, my apologies, because I'm on the phone with the security company now. They said no, someone called and said there was a break in here. Stevenson was instantly indignant. He'd sunk two years of his life and a considerable chunk of savings and energy into his business. Now, someone thought he was robbing it. But his logical side took over as two other officers materialized behind him. He was armed with the truth but surrounded by four lawmen with guns. All I remember was the cop is in front of me, he told the Post. His hand was at his side, by his pistol, like he was ready to pull it out if he had to. Stevenson's journey to that fateful moment on Valencia Street had started years ago in New York. Stevenson and a buddy were sitting in a car during a snowstorm, griping about the bad weather. He told the friend he wished he was sitting anywhere but there, maybe drinking a nice glass of lemonade. Sure, they could go to a bodega to get some, but that would be a low-quality beverage, probably bottled months ago. Someone, he thought, should make a Starbucks for lemonade. The idea wouldn't go away. And one day he woke at 4 a.m., sat at the kitchen table, and sketched out a business plan that would consume the next two years of his life. He took the bartending course so he could use mixology to incorporate novel ingredients into his recipes. He applied for small business loans, set up a crowdfunding page, and pitched San Francisco's small business incubator. The ingredients would be organic and locally sourced, he told investors. Gourmetade would make a fresh batch every morning. He leased the space that used to hold his wife's favorite flower shop. It's already yellow, he thought to himself during one trip to check it out. We don't even have to paint. Nudging the dream along got harder after Stevenson's wife got pregnant. There were complications. They spent weeks in the hospital, but last fall, they welcomed a baby boy to the world. They named him Legacy. And on July 14, Gourmetade was serving drinks in bottles shaped like lemons. For a few days, the biggest kick-up was a San Francisco Chronicle article that declared his $8 glass of lemonade as the latest extravagantly priced Bay Area concoction. But on that Tuesday morning, the price point of lavender lemonade was far from his mind. A police officer was telling him to take his hands out of his pocket. He complied, then used his key to lock and unlock the kiosk to show the officers that he was an enterprising businessman, not a lemonade stand burglar. It wasn't enough. The officers asked for his identification. Stevenson said he was hesitant to hand it over. The key should have been more than enough, but he thought complying would defuse the situation. He was not charged with a crime or arrested, and he took a brief video of the officers as they left. Reached Monday, the San Francisco Police Department did not immediately comment. 
Stevenson, meanwhile, posted it on Facebook and Instagram, along with other happier videos of his business, and has received a steady stream of support from people dropping by to purchase an $8 bottle of lemonade, or give him a hug, or both. He realizes now that selling lemonade is apparently the latest thing you apparently shouldn't do while black. An ever-expanding list of people have posted about how neighbors, store clerks, and perfect strangers have viewed their everyday actions through criminally tinted glasses. People shopping for underwear, falling asleep in a dorm common room, or even going to a seaside overlook to read a book about Christianity. Collectively, the incidents have garnered the hashtag living while black. One moment, Stevenson said, his biggest worries were some bad publicity and a malfunctioning alarm. The next, he was trying to move as slowly and non-threateningly as possible so as to give the officers surrounding him no reason to use force. Days later, he told the Post, he could still remember two things vividly, the officer's hand an inch away from his gun, and a sudden fear of not being able to come home to Legacy. He's nine months old, the best thing I've ever done, he told the Post, crying. I want to be there for him. It hits you to think that. I have so much to teach that kid. So much to share with him to get him ready to be in this kind of position, to rise above this. Let's move on to the next story. Even though his family had forgotten about it and was sitting enjoying their meal, he couldn't help but keep an eye on the people at the table across the table. He could easily hear the drama they were creating. They were cheering loudly with smudged lipstick and eyeliner covering their faces. These girls were unaware of what he was planning. He just wanted to take his family out for a special meal. They hadn't gone out to eat in months, and he thought he'd treat them. He was a patient man. He had been waiting behind the car that had been trying to pull out for ages. When it finally managed to get out, he gave the driver a wave and a smile, and he went on his merry way. Finally, he could park. As Tom was about to pull in, a car came speeding from around the corner. The car was packed with young adults. They sped into his spot just as he was about to pull in. Tom didn't even get a chance to pull his handbrake up. He could feel his stomach twist into a knot while his hands clenched so tight on the steering wheel his knuckles turned white. Did they think they were entitled to it? How dare they? Tom tried to breathe, he rolled down his window and politely said, Excuse me, but I was waiting for that space. The young girl driving sneered at him and said, Too bad, your name wasn't on it. The girls got out of their car and giggled as they made their way towards the Applebee's nearby. He knew he'd get back at them. He slowly cobbled together an idea in his head while he ate dinner with his family. He still tried to enjoy the steak dinner he had ordered and the company. But when he turned to look at the girls that had come in before him, he could see them taking shot after shot. They were getting hammered. Even the driver looked like they were getting intoxicated. So much for a designated driver. Then his idea came to him. He called over the waiter and slipped him $20. The waiter listened to Tom's scheme and grinned. Seems he didn't like the girls any more than he did. They had been giving him trouble all night. Tom's family had just finished off their meal and were ready to go. He paid for the dinner. And as he left, he whispered to the waiter, wait until 10 minutes after we leave. Then go up to those girls and tell them someone called with a message. Someone keyed their car and they should have parked somewhere else. Tom looked back at Applebee's one more time before getting in the car with his family and driving away without touching the girl's car. He hoped this would teach the girls about karma, but it escalated so much more than he could have imagined. When the group had heard that someone keyed their car, they were outraged. They flipped out and called the police and made a huge scene in the restaurant. The group had demanded that the police find the culprit. Even though the cops couldn't find a scratch, the girls wouldn't take no for an answer. The two officers didn't appreciate their tone. Since the group had been boozing, the cops could have easily charged them with public intoxication. But they waited for them to get in the car. The girls stumbled over to their car and got in. Their drunk driver turned the keys in the ignition, and they were greeted with the sound of the police siren behind them. This is where Tom couldn't help but snort his coffee while the waiter conveyed the story. And the charge? The group had begun their evening by cutting off a man and being rude to him. They ended their night with a DUI each and public intoxication citations. Tom and the waiter both theorized that it was a smaller charge to begin with, but the group probably gave the police the same treatment they had given them. 
Let's just hope the girls learned their lesson. But what was the public's opinion? Well, aside from the server saying it was the easiest $40 he had ever made, Tom tipped him another $20 a few days later. Some people think it was going too far for the minor deed of taking a parking space. Others disagreed. Many voices chimed in, saying it was exactly what they deserved. There was also one larger point that a few people pointed out. Tom's revenge might have been simple, but the result was enormous. Without his plan, the group probably would have done something incredibly dangerous. People could have got hurt or worse. What about Tom? Some question if the story was even true, since they cannot confirm any names, find any police reports, or produce any pictures. We all know that at least someone who would have taken at least one blurry photo. But does that even matter? There are two lessons here for everyone here. First, never underestimate your elders. It might be cliché, but it's still true. This can be children to parents or even grown kids with the elderly. They are often wiser and far cleverer in ways of dealing with problems, not to mention vast past experiences to draw upon. The second lesson? Being a brat will only last so long. Then life or karma, if you believe in such things, will eventually come back and bite you in the bum. And if you're really unlucky, that bite could end up as jail time and a spot on the permanent record.